You're watching CS 105.1, where I talk about sports and movies with good vibes. And we gotta get some good vibes in here because the Nuggets take another loss. Let's get it. Hey everyone, let's talk sound quality. Imagine having pro level audio that's easy to set up, flexible, and sounds incredible. That's the Rode PodMic USB. It's got both USB and XLR connections. So whether you're recording solo at home or in a full studio setup, you're covered. And get this, the built-in DSP, uh, DSP effects let you adjust the sound uh, with zero lag. You get that deep, smooth broadcast tone right out of the box. It's versatile, powerful, and basically makes your voice sound like pure gold. How's it going everyone and welcome. My name is CS Chandler here for another take of Nuggets basketball and man, the Nuggets need some help. <laughs> they are struggling uh, just to even get their feet on the floor. It just it seems like a bunch of um, Bambis on ice right now. Like they just can't really get their flow going. Um, like, is this really some of the same starters that won a championship? It doesn't really feel like it right now. Uh, but you know, we're, uh, we know that we're going to have some down days. Uh, obviously we have two in a row. Uh, we just had five good days, so, you know, I uh, can't get down too much right now, but there is some things to talk about here. So, um, my, uh, the, Let's back up first. The Nuggets did take a loss uh, tonight. They lost the, uh, to the Grizzlies, uh, 105 to 90. I think I'm a little bit more okay with this loss than the Pelicans because the Pelicans were like super unmanned. That was definitely a game that we should have won. The Grizzlies, on the other hand, are a little bit more of a challenge. They have. Pretty much everyone except for two major players out right now with, uh, um, actually, no, three, uh, with uh, um, John Morant, um, Gigi Jackson, and uh, uh, Smart. So, I mean, they have most of their guys in right now, and they're also a very big team right now like not like popular or whatever but like physically big they have one of the largest men in basketball with Zach Eady right now so I we were undermanned from the get-go uh with this thing and sometimes that works in your advantage some some teams are able to play off the little man uh um ball a little uh, better but not the Nuggets tonight they, it was a little bit uh <laughs> Uh, embarrassing to say the least, but uh, I will say that they're losing against a good Memphis team is okay to me compared to them losing against a bad Pelicans team. Now, I think the big takeaway from all of this is that for the most part, any of our wins this season have been very marginal. They have been super down to the wire. They, we've almost not have won any of these uh, matches that we have. The only one that we were um, actually like good to win was the one against the Jazz, which, I mean, come on, that's the worst team in the league. So, like, if you don't win that one, then that's definitely a, a red flag there. But, I mean, we did – we had a big win against OKC. OKC is the top uh, contender in the West Con uh, um, Conference. They're one of the top contenders in the full league, so we we beat them. We gave them their first, you know, loss, which says something. But the uh, and I think the biggest thing is just to the fact that Jokic makes people better. He may not have a great game, but he's still making other players better. Like their performance shows better, even when he's not on the floor. The non-Jokic minutes with Jokic still in the game are, I feel like, significantly better than when Jokic isn't even in the game like we've seen the last two games. So uh, the Nuggets have some soul-searching, I think, right now because they are just not who they should be. Uh, they're not the Nuggets that we, I feel like, fell in love with um, back in 2023. But at the same time, that's sports and that's life. Like sometimes you, uh, it's a roller coaster and you're down – on your luck on one minute and then you're up on the next and you got to ride that wave. And so, uh, as, uh, 
an avid uh, Nuggets fan. I'm going to continue to ride that wave because I do love my Nuggets. But, man, it's hurting to watch them uh, play this kind of bad basketball. Uh, tonight was definitely a very bad basketball night for them. And I think that's one of the other other uh, op, uh, things here is that when some teams lose, you can still see that they are trying to win. And I think that's the difference here is that we're not seeing the effort and the urgency and the trying, the passion to win with the Nuggets right now. Uh, you go to last night's game with uh, Boston versus Toronto. Uh, Boston won overtime um, very uh, controversially because Tatum traveled, but then like they only decided that after the fact. So what are you going to do with that? But still, they did. I mean, they got the win. There's no ifs, ands, and buffs. They got the win. Should they have gotten the win? Who knows? Maybe, you know, reverse that. But then there's some other calls that weren't called or whatever. But it went down to the wire like in the like they almost went into a second overtime and so you could tell that the um the raptors are trying their hardest to get wins and so you got to give some props to that um you got to give props to pelicans winning uh against the the nuggets they looked hungrier they looked like they wanted to win the Nuggets just don't seem like they want to win unless they have Jokic. And if they have Jokic, then it seems more or less that like Jokic is the only one that really wants to win. Uh, and so there's a lot of um, uncharacteristic uh, aspects to the Nuggets right now. Hey, everyone. If you're looking for a game-changing webcam that keeps up with every move, you've got to check out the Insta360 link. It's a 4K AI-powered webcam that auto-tracks so you're always in frame, even if you're moving around. Perfect for live streams, meetings, content creating, also podcasts. It adjusts to light, zooms in and out, and follows you naturally. This is hands-free, hassle-free, studio-quality production for anyone who wants professional visuals right from the desk. Insta360 Link is a total game changer. Um, so first takes here, uh, again, no Jokic, but we did have Malone back again. Uh, the starters were MPJ, P. Watt, uh, Dario Sarge, uh, CB, Christian Brown, Julian, uh, uh, Jamal uh, Murray, I said Julian's brother, um, but uh, he actually, he played in the um, the bench and was our best nugget tonight. So uh, the Grizzlies uh, had red uniforms uh, on, which I wasn't a fan of. It didn't really feel like it was their branding. Um, red and the Grizzlies, like, I, I didn't really, uh, um, it, I, I didn't think it jived well with them. So, but uh and then, uh, like I said, the uh, Nuggets were under um, undersized against the Grizzlies. You had uh, Jared Jackson Jr. You had uh, Edie, uh, Zach Edie. You had Jay Huff. I mean, even Desmond Bain, who's not a really tall uh, basketball player, is super freaking buff. And even then, he he outstrengths you. And so um, there was a lot of kind of more or less manhandling with the, the Grizzly versus the Nuggets tonight. Now, the Grizzlies were one of the teams that we swept last year. Totally different story this year. And I kind of already saw that to be a thing in the beginning of the season. Like, I already kind of saw that, you know, if they got everyone that they wanted uh, healthy and they came into this thing, and they've shown some heart in this season uh, already uh, within these last games. But... Uh, uh, I also noticed that the Nuggets are getting left behind uh, in this growing aggressive league because this was a n yet another aggressive game. And I've just noticed now that most of the games these days are a little bit more aggressive than they were before. And they're letting them play a little bit more, but the Nuggets are getting left behind. They're not adding to that kind of aggression. They're not pushing back. Um, and I don't know if that's maybe because like they're too afraid to get fouled or whatever, but, um, 
that's also one thing that they're lacking from without Jokic and AG because those are the um, two biggest, toughest guys on our team, on our squad. So um, that does say something right there. But, uh, yeah, so the first quarter, uh, Memphis controlled the tip. Murray um, got the first bucket, though, uh, which was nice. And so, like, the Nuggets actually started off really strong in this uh, this match, which is sometimes how, kind of how they do. They actually do start off strong within the first, I want to say, like, five minutes is probably, like, the best basketball that they play within the four quarters. And then they just, like, go take a break and then show up in the fourth. That's kind of what happened in this uh, game as well. So... Uh, the uh, Nuggets looked uh, like they're playing smarter, um, playing a little smarter, uh, building a six-point lead uh, by the seven-minute 52 mark, uh, eleven to six. They even got like I think a seven-point lead at one point. Um, Murray uh, at this point uh, actually was two for two had not missed a shot at all and my hopes were high <laughs> but then if you know anything really about Murray you know that that kind of goes downhill uh, and the missed hope so uh, Murray then I actually uh, pretty much after I made that note Murray caused a uh, turnover and the Grizz went with back to back buckets uh, and it showed also that the Nuggets, again, are not boxing out and getting the rebounds. This is constantly a, a reoccurring thing. Last year, the big issue was them not getting the free throws and the three-pointers and not getting offensive rebounds. Now, they're not getting offensive rebounds and they're not boxing, boxing out to get the uh, rebound on the other side. They're allowing other teams to get uh, second chance points. And they're not getting uh, good transition uh, points, and they're not, you know, defending tra- transition points. Like the in transition stuff is just falling apart on them. Uh, and it seemed like the Nuggets were like falling asleep on defense. Uh, then in the first quarter, we uh, got a stupid tech on DeAndre Jordan, DJ, for taunting uh, Ald- uh, Aldama. Uh, Spaniard guy for, um, and I thought it was really stupid because Aldama really also taunted him back like it was like chirping back and forth and yet they gave DJ the tech instead of both of them the tech and there was another play like that that it was just kind of like it felt almost like the refs were on their side for the most of the game but then when you look at the fouls uh, stats and everything it actually seemed like they we got more fouls in our favor than they did, but that could have also been the fact that they were playing more aggressive. Um, but yeah, so they got a tech, and then uh, or DJ got gets a tech, and they shoot the on um, the tech free throw, and then uh, there was even a point where um, Strother uh, was completely lost. He was trying to find some guy to defend and he couldn't do it it was just like he he looked like a lost man on the the floor trying to figure out what to do and then by the time he figured it out he caused a foul so it just like was really like uh i don't know what is up with the nuggets they don't look like they're themselves and i think the big issue right now too from that fact is just the fact that they took a five-day break when you take a five-day break Stuff like this kind of happens. You get a little bit too more too relaxed, especially young players. They start to get a little more relaxed, and they're like, "Oh, cool, I got some time off." Instead of focusing it on getting better, they focus it on, uh, you know, having fun or whatever. And it, it was, uh, it definitely has shown so far, to say the least. So, um, and that kind of happens a lot of times with the Nuggets. You give them time off, and then. Uh, and I know that they need time off, that they're getting burnt out, but at the same time, then they get rusty. And it also happens with the avalanche too in hockey. Whenever you give the avalanche a week off, then they be, they turn rusty. Like you need to continuously play to keep up that momentum. Otherwise, you know, take a body a record. Um, and then Westbrook uh, drained the clock um, at the end of the first only to shoot a brick. 
uh, or actually, no, he got his shot blocked. And so it's just, like plays like that is like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like just pass the ball if you're not going to um, put it up right then. And instead of trying to be selfish and trying to get the bucket yourself, like that selfishness isn't going to help the Nuggets. And there was a lot of selfish plays tonight. Uh, the Grizzlies took quarter one, uh, 28 to 25. Uh, after we were winning or leading by seven, they then end up leading by three. The second quarter starts and Nuggets have two chances to um, get a bucket and can't capitalize. Uh, they then struggle to control the ball. Uh, and when I say struggle to control the ball, ball, I mean like beginning basketball players trying to control the ball. Like that's kind of the level of uh, what we saw of them trying to control the ball. It almost felt like there was either butter all, all over that ball just for when the Nuggets were holding it or like the Monstars came in and took out their talent to be able to control the ball because they looked embarrassing trying to um, keep a possession just keep a possession you don't even need to make the basket for right now just keep the possession don't let it that ball out of your hands and my god it's like it was uh, bad it was very uh, laughable uh, if you weren't uh, a Nuggets fan uh, and even if it was, it was kind of like a uh, best, better to laugh than uh, to keep from crying kind of uh, situation. Um, but Memphis then gets a 12-point lead in the second quarter. Uh, the Nuggets have spurts of energy, but it's still not enough. Uh, the lead gets cut down to seven, but then Jay Huff, former Nugget, comes in and uh, getting the lead gets the lead back up to 12. Uh, and when I say uh, former Nugget, right? Last season, he was a Nugget. He played horrible. He was a horrible player. He like he was one of those players that when uh, Malone got him out there, you were just like, okay, obviously either Malone's waving the flag or we're in such a good spot that we don't care if we lose points because Jay Huff is out there. But now that Jay Huff is in uh, with the, the Grizzlies, he's all of a sudden good and is averaging um, double-digit points right now. And it's it's crazy how this isn't the first time this has happened. I know Isaiah Hardenstein also um, succeeded more so after he got out of the Nuggets. Bull Bull has succeeded better not being in the Nuggets. Like, it's almost becoming a pattern. Um, Monte Morris has succeeded better than when he played with the Nuggets. Like, there's just... I don't want to blame Malone because I don't, I think he's a great coach and I know some of you might disagree with that and everything, but he is definitely one of the top five best coaches out there. Um, but there's someone in his staff that, it, or maybe the bulk of the staff that is just not great right now. I don't think Malone coaches most of the bench. I think he coaches more of the starters or whoever is up, up to play. And so Who's ever really coaching the um, the bench needs to reevaluate how to um, grow these uh, these, these ball players because they are not playing at a level that they should be. We are 29th in bench points right now. We are one of the worst benches in the league. I don't, I don't know who the uh, 30th is because I don't see how anyone could be actually worse than us right now. It, it's just, it's so bad. Um, and so the, uh, see, then uh, Jamal uh, loses the ball in the second quarter uh, and quickly um, put it up for an air ball. And so he like he he got the ball, he loses it, he get he gets it back, but then puts it up for an air ball. Grizzlies get the ball and. Desmond Bain, I kid you not, goes from one end, un, end of the court to the other end of the court and gets a layup and gets two points, gets the uh, lead up to uh, 12. And uh, it, it, like there was no contesting at all. They just let him travel or you know uh, uh, transition all the way from uh, one end to the other end. And... Uh, um, the Grizzlies end up taking uh, quarter two, 27 to 18, and they end up um, 
still in the lead, 55 to 43 at the, at the half. So if you remember, at the end of the first, they were leading by three. At the end of the uh, half, they now are leading by 12. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And so then third quarter starts. And this is probably one of the worst uh, third quarter starts for us because Murray loses the ball and lets Memphis get an easy bucket right off the bat. Like he straight up just like lost control of the ball, like uh, as if he didn't even know how to dribble it. It was so, it was very bad. Uh, None of the nuggets were in double digits. We're in the third quarter and none of our players are in double digits at all. Um, They aren't boxing out uh, still. Finally, uh, finally, though, we get a rebound, uh, but uh, Michael Porter Jr. gets his uh, pocket picked by Scotty Pepper Jr., gets another um, a bucket, and actually a ref, uh, um, a missed call. And this is where I started to feel like the uh, refs were calling bad calls on the Nuggets in favor of Memphis because uh, it, it, it kind of seemed more or less that he fouled Pippen. Uh, or that he fouled uh, Michael Porter Jr., but Pippen got the foul for him. And then uh, um, Murray gets a clear path uh, violation because of this as well. And that was also, uh, I think, bullshit. And so at this point now, the Memphis Grizzlies have ballooned their lead up to 20. <laughs> uh, the Nuggets are at this point looking like a G League. I mean... I don't know. Maybe a G League plays better than what the Nuggets played like tonight because they just it was probably one of the worst games that they've played, um, at least in the middle of the of the game uh, was the worst. Uh, then Strother actually gets um, back to back threes and makes him the first Nugget of tonight to score double digits. <laughs> We're already well into the third quarter, and finally one of ours gets uh, double digits, and it gets 12 at this point. Uh, Murray uh, keeps on losing possessions. And then Edie goes out, thank God, with a tweaked ankle. I've never felt so good about another player getting hurt and out of the game. I just I was getting so frustrated. I was like, oh, thank God Edie is out now, uh, and hopefully he won't be there for uh, Tuesday. Um, but... Uh, th- this was definitely the best thing that happened for the Nuggets because it allowed them to then fight back finally because they didn't have a mountain standing in front of them. They had some kind of breathing room now finally, um, but not enough to capitalize on the full game. Nuggets uh, have a slightly better quarter uh, in the third, but still Memphis takes the third quarter 29-21. Uh, to tw- uh, 21. And then uh, the fourth quarter, Nuggets get a good start in the fourth quarter. Murray uh, with a great assist to Westbrook for a three. Grizzlies are playing really aggressive, though, and like the Pelicans did, and they're throwing their bodies at the Nuggets with no regard for themselves, their teammates, or their opponents. Like, it was almost like kamikaze kind of style of, like, playing. Like, they were just throwing their bodies at the, the Nuggets, um, trying to disrupt and uh, get something. And that they, it, it worked because they didn't often get very much uh, fouls called on them for doing it, and they were able to get the uh, a turnover from it. And so it was just this crazy kind of uh, throwing your body at the the opponent and seeing what happens kind of style. And they were like landing on the floor and everything. And I'm pretty sure that's also maybe what happened with Zach Eady because I know he already took a fall from uh, Draymond Green during the Warriors game, which I thought was a little bit dirty for Draymond. But at the same time, now lo- looking a little bit more at how the Grizzlies play, maybe it was warranted. I don't know. But um then uh, Sar- Sarge uh, is a, the second nugget to get into double digits with a dunk. Uh, and then, or no, sorry, uh, with a, um, it was a three that got him in. It was Brown, uh, our CB, uh, Brown, Christian Brown, that got into double digits with the dunk. And then uh, Westbrook also gets into double digits with a, um, a three. And so finally, we're getting more and more of our our guys into double digits uh, figures. Murray gets a a three, bringing him into double digits, finally. Like, and I'll go over stats, but it took Jay Huff 
11 minutes to score 10 points. And it took Jamal Murray 38 or 37 minutes to score like 13. It's freaking infuriating. <laughs> um, and I, I only point this out because uh, for the most of the, the Nuggets uh, to get double digits in, in points, yeah, like that that that's just like the the issue there is that it took so long for them to get double digits and yet one bad player or supposedly bad player has uh 10 minutes or or 10 11 minutes and gets 10 points like that like it didn't take him very long but yet it's taken the nuggets several minutes almost the entire game to get into double digits um and that means also that Jay Huff was better than any Nugget player tonight. Uh, Malone finally uh, challenges a, a call um, that was called, uh, it was an out-of-bounds call uh, on Strother, but then they reverse it because there was actually a foul caused on Strother, uh, which was nice to see something go in the, another way in the, the Nuggets' direction. Um, the Nuggets then get the lead down to 11, but then fatigue starts setting in, and the shots aren't as focused, allowing the Grizzlies to balloon it back up to 15. Um, and at the end of the, ga- the game, the Nuggets win the fourth quarter. And so we did win one quarter. But too much, or too bad it was the last quarter and not enough. Um, it w- they won the fourth quarter 26 to 21, end up uh, losing again 105 to 90. As a cinematographer, photographer and now a podcaster i do believe lighting is everything and if you're serious about creating dynamic content you need to check out nanlite they're all about precision and control whether it's soft natural lighting or vibrant colors nanlite gives you full flexibility to set the mood for any scene from compact leds to powerful soft boxes nanlite has light solutions that fit every setup It's ideal for photographers, like myself, videographers, like myself, and creators who want to pro-grade quality right out on their fingertips. With Nanlite, you're lighting like a pro every time. So let's go over the stats here. Uh, Like I said, Michael Porter Jr., one of the starters, he uh, had 10 points tonight, three rebounds, one assist. He was four for 12 in free throws. 33%. 33%. That just is unacceptable for one of our max playing contract uh, players. Like he should be shooting at least 45%. Uh, zero for four in three pointers. He was two for two in free throws. He had two turnovers and one personal foul. Uh, Peyton Watson had uh, seven points, so he didn't score a lot, but Peyton Watson was definitely there for a lot of the defensive plays, which is kind of what we want him there for to begin with. And if he's ever getting a good night of um, points, then that means that the Nuggets are having a good, decent night overall, um, except for the Pelicans because he did do well there, but the Pelican, uh, the Nuggets sucked in that game overall. So uh, he got seven points, five rebounds, two assists, one steal, one block. He was three for seven in field goals, one for uh, two and three points. He had zero turnovers and zero personal fouls. So, you know, uh, gotta love when a Nugget gets zero turnovers in their time. And he played thirty, uh, or sorry, uh, twenty-eight minutes tonight. Should have probably played a little bit more than that. Uh, I was a little bit surprised when he wasn't on the court enough. Uh, Dario Sarge uh, was 10, uh, 10 points, 10 rebounds, so he got a double-double. <laughs> uh, three assists, two steals. He was four for 10 in field goals, two for five in three-pointers, and then he had zero uh, turnovers as well, uh, which is awesome for him, and one personal foul. CB had three point, uh, 13 points, four rebounds, four assists, one steal. He was five for 11 in field goals, Zero for two and three points, three for four in uh, free throws. He had one turnover and zero personal fouls. So this is probably one of the worst games that uh, Christian Brown has played to uh, this season so far. Um, but he still got into double digits, and he's he was a minus two. So he was actually technically our best player in the plus minus section, um, even though uh, Julian Strother made the most points for us. 
Uh, and then there's uh, Jamal Murray with uh, also 13 points. Again, played 37 minutes and only scored 13 points. Um, un- unacceptable for him. And then uh, six rebounds, seven assists, three steals, two blocks. He was six for uh, 15 in field goals, one for six in three points. And then he had six turnovers with uh, three personal fouls. And then I'll just get to um, Julian Strother had 19 points, uh, four rebounds, three assists, one steal, one block. He was six for 13 in free throw, uh, free field goals, four for seven in three-pointers, three for four in free throws, and he had two personal fouls. And Westbrook had 12 points, three rebounds, three assists, one steal, one block. He was four for 10 in field goals, two for three in three-pointers, two for four in uh, free throws, three uh, turnovers, and one personal foul. So, uh, and overall, the Nuggets, let's see, uh, rebounds, we had 39 to their 45. We had 23 assists to their 31. (laughs) We had nine steals to their 10. We had five blocks to their 10. Uh, Our field goal range was 41%. Theirs was uh, 45 uh, so not much, uh, not much worse than us, or not much better than us. Uh, our three points uh, um, percentage was thirty-two; they were thirty-three, so pretty even there. And then free throws, we were seventy-one percent; they were eighty-three uh, percent. We had fourteen turnovers; they had twelve. We had twelve personal fouls; they had fifteen. So you can kind of see that the. Personal fouls weren't actually that much different between the two uh, teams. The turnovers actually weren't that much different. It was really the rebounds and the assists and uh, and then them making their free throws, whereas we didn't, and them also capitalizing on the turnovers. Like They had a lot of turnovers too, but we didn't capitalize on those turnovers. So there's a, there's a lot there as well. Uh the major takeaways from this game is just that um, I don't want to be one of those spoiled uh, fan base members that gets upset every time we lose and then uh, celebrates every time we win. I know that losing comes with the territory and there's a lot um that the players have to go through that we as fans don't really understand. That's not the excuse what we um, see them do or lack thereof, but it helps give perspective that uh, maybe we don't know everything, you know, Uh, but it is getting harder and harder to defend Jamal Murray. Uh, He's been a nugget since day one. And if you have been uh, since day one as well, then you, uh, and then you understand, uh, and if you haven't, then you don't understand the uphill battle that the uh, that it took for the Nuggets to get their first ever chip in uh, 47 years of playing. Uh, and that's why I stand behind Jamal. Uh, even when he plays like a G-leaguer, the Nuggets uh, say family on three in their huddles, and family doesn't you know walk away from another member when they're feeling when they're down. And so I'm still going to, um, you know, hope for the best for Jamal. I don't want to see him traded uh, because he, I, I he get, he got us a chip, and that means a lot to a fan base who never had a chip before. The team that got you that chip, that first ever chip, I mean, it means something. So. Yeah, he's playing like uh, like dog shit right now. To be honest, he is he's a uh, he's not himself right now. He's playing at a G League level, if that. But there, uh, he just needs to get his head right and decide whether or not he wants to be in uh, MMA or if he wants to be in basketball. Hopefully, he chooses basketball and he gets that passion and that love back. But uh, I'm still gonna as long as he's a Nugget, I'm still going to defend him because. Family on three, essentially, you know. Uh, 
Also, a question is, will Jokic be back for Tuesday's tournament game? And I've seen comment already uh, saying that, you know, don't bring him back. Let the um, team figure this out the hard way. And I do agree with that to some point. But at the other point, too, like, I don't want to keep on losing. Like, I want the Nuggets to win. And Jokic helps that. He is the definition of the Nuggets winning. At almost to the point that if we do end up getting a chip at the end of this year, he should just take the, Lionel, uh, the Larry O'Brien trophy with him home because he earned it by himself almost. Uh, but if not, uh, then the Nuggets will continue to lose, I'm sure, on Tuesday uh, because they don't have the size or the strength to battle against an aggressive league. Uh, so I'm not, uh, if he's playing, I'm more hopeful. If he's not, then I'm just going to kind of like today, I was already kind of expecting them to lose. Uh, and maybe that's also kind of what helped me kind of get through it, even though I'm just really pissed off too that they, they didn't win and that they just kind of didn't care that they didn't win, or at least they didn't show it. And maybe that's what they need to do too, is they need to show their fan base that they care about losing. We want to see it. We want to see them try to win. We want to see them uh, show their emotions for losing, like make it seem like it actually matters to them because it matters to us. So... Uh, other than that, um, can't wait for AG to get back to because Mr. Nugget needs to, <laughs> uh, get back on the floor and, you know, show what's up. But the good news tonight was that the Knicks won, uh, again, they, they just keep on, you know, uh, see my saving grace right now. <laughs> I'm re- getting to rely more on the Knicks than I am on the Nuggets. Uh, the Knicks won against the Nets 114 to 104. So Awesome. Uh, that my Knicks are still playing well, uh, at least well for what the Eastern Conference is, because they technically would be, you know, actually I think below uh, us if they were in the Western Conference. And then the uh, the uh, Broncos won against the Hawks that or the Falcons, the Atlanta Falcons, uh, thirty eight to six. So that's awesome. And then more good news is that if we look up. The standings right now, the current standings for the NBA in the Western Conference, even with the loss today, we are still ahead of the Timberwolves. I, that that right there makes me happy. <laughs> uh, the Timberwolves have gotten two wins, we've gotten two losses, and yet we are still ahead of them. So uh, we are sitting at the sixth seed right now. And hopefully Jokic comes back on Tuesday and then we're going to be, you know, uh, all gravy. We're going to soar to the one seed. Uh, But the uh, OKC also lost today, so that's also good news. Uh, And right now the uh, Golden State Warriors are sitting at the one seed. Crazy. Um, You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they got to the finals again this, this year. If it's not the Nuggets, you know... I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the the Warriors. Uh, they are playing awesome basketball right now, and Cleveland too. They are continuing their winning streak with uh, 15 wins, and we're playing them next uh, next month in December. So hopefully, you know, uh, we can be that uh, fly in the ointment for them as well. Because so far, the Nuggets have had a reputation of ruining other um, long streaks. So. Hopefully we can uh, be that that team uh, if no one else does it before us. So I also wanted to uh, um, go through some comments that some of you have made. So thought I would take the time to do that. Uh, figured that would be a n- cool addition <laughs> to the show here. So Astrid did did E C E C C O three thousand five says there is no true second best player on this team sometimes it uh it ag mpj or jamal it sucks that the fo has spent uh front office has spent so much time or so much money on three players the lack of identity outside of Jokic is on the coach malone he has been here for how long and the second unit sucks it begs the question if malone's a good enough coach if Jokic is out for an extended period of time. So uh, this is kind of where I was saying, you know, like I get it. I get the frustration with Jamal Murray. I get the frustration with Michael Porter Jr. Um, I mean, I think that up until his injury, AG was actually more trending upward um, into more of a consistent, 
almost like our backup uh, um, star, essentially. Uh, and hopefully he comes back soon and he is playing at the same level. But I don't 100% put the blame on Coach Malone. Coach Malone's job is to win games. And he's going to only uh, do that with the tools that he's given. And yes, I'm referring to these players as tools because essentially it is that. It's pretty much a live action chessboard game that you're watching two coaches at it um, go. And you're just watching it uh, in real time. And the uh, I would blame more of Calvin Booth. Calvin Booth is the one who um, sets Malone up with the right tools. And he's not right now. Uh, yes, a, a coach needs to inspire a player to get better. He needs to encourage them to get better. He needs to get, you know, help them out and everything. But it's not just the head coach. There is so many other um, people involved in the team. Uh, and yes, he should, uh, because he is the head coach, he's going to take the blames and the um, the wins as well. So, but I, I don't blame Coach Malone. I I I think it's just the fact that Calvin Booth has done a horrible job getting some of these players in, and he also did a horrible job making these um, contracts with uh, some of the players instead of using that money to um, either retain some players or to go after better, um, better talent. I think that it was a very bad missed opportunity to let uh, Bruce Brown walk. I know he's not great, but he was great with the Nuggets, so... Um, I would have, I, I think that it, it was worth it to keep the entire, um, 2023 roster to try to get a, uh, second championship at the expense of paying an tax, uh, rather than let them walk and try to, uh, have like a long-term vision or whatever, because obviously that long-term vision is not coming to fruition right now. So, uh, and Michael Board Jr., I would say, is consistent. He's not horrible, and he's not amazing. And that's kind of where he's been. Like, that was where he was last season. That was kind of where he was in the championship season. Like, he's not horrible, and he's not um, uh, amazing. He's just kind of there to give you kind of solid minutes here and there. But I think a lot of the people also who criticize him also under, don't understand what he's exactly he's been through. He went through two back surgeries. Like you walk funnier after something like that. Not that I've had it, but I just talking to other people who have like you, you have to relearn how to walk. You have to relearn how to do so many other functions. And for him to be playing at the level that he is having had those two back surgeries is just phenomenal. It's no other player has ever done that before. So I give props to MJJ he um like yeah sometimes he uh ball watches and sometimes he can be sloppy with the ball or whatever but like he uh you know he's i would say he's one player right now that's kind of trying to show that he actually cares a little bit at least more so than murray because murray is just really arrogant right now and not wanting to even care but all the criticism i got murray right now i'll i'll i'll, I'll uh, uh concede with so uh, and then, uh, let's see, uh, Rich Arana's 7247 uh, says, the takeaway isn't that uh, Joker is an MVP. We already knew that. The takeaway is that a G League team without him, and, it, and it's, oh, this is a G League team without him, and it's embarrassing for them because they have an all- uh, all time talent they're wasting his greatness with these garbage cans um i mean pretty much yeah <laughs> i agree uh the nuggets right now are very much of a g league team without Jokic. it's almost like um when you uh like i'm gonna go to comic books real quick and there's a character juggernaut in x-men who's amazing when he um, has, he, he relies his power on a stone. And uh, whenever he has that stone, he's able to be, um, he's unstoppable essentially. But you take that away from him and he's nothing. And that's kind of what the nuggets are. You take away their uh, their joker, their that stone, and they're kind of nothing. So 
uh, yeah, um, it, it's now a matter of trying to build them so that they're not this embarrassing um, a kind of a, a team that like, in all rights, if we didn't have um, Jokic right now, we should be the worst team out there. Like the, the Jazz... Uh, pretty much on the same level of the, as the Jazz. Like, we should be one of the worst teams out there right now uh, with the level of urgency and the the just the, um, the overall way that we're playing right now. Um, and thank God we don't... Uh, that, and thank God that we do have Jokic so that we're not at the bottom. But also, what happens when he retires? What happens if he gets finally fed up and wants to get moved to another team? Like... <laughs> I don't want to think like that, knock on wood, that he stays with us. And I think yeah, he will. And I think that the off, the front office will do whatever they can to make uh, sure that he stays with the Nuggets. Uh, I I would actually see them trade um, one of the starters or two of the starters before they even consider letting uh, Jokic walk. Because, like, why would you? He's the best player in the world. You, you do whatever you can to keep him. So, but I do agree that they're kind of wasting right now. Um, and they've backed themselves into this corner right now. They're in this spot because of Calvin Booth. So, um, and then uh, we got uh, Drazen uh, Mielevich, uh GF6KR. So apologize if I mispronounce your st- your names, y'all. Um, but uh, he says. <laughs> um, how do you think of uh, Murray as if? Uh, how high do you think of Murray as if he's he has uh, Najee's uh, salary, not fifty two mil a year? Take into account how Ingram played these eleven games, and the Pelicans don't want to give him a max contract. Think then. Yeah, I mean, you got a point there with with Murray. I mean, again, I mean that that's really that that's not uh, anything on Murray. I mean, he's not the one that gave himself the contract. It's the Nuggets front office that gave him that contract. So it's really, again, it's Calvin Booth. Calvin Booth is in charge of all of those contracts. So if uh, anyone on the Nuggets gets a contract that we as the fans don't agree with or don't think that they deserve that, it's not up to us. It's up to Calvin Booth. So, uh, I mean... I don't blame Murray for taking the contract. I mean, especially, uh, you know, I, I'm sure that he looked at it and saw already knew that he wasn't playing great and that if he didn't take this contract, who else would give him that kind of level of a contract um, because of this? So, I, you know, I, I think he, he took, uh, um, he capitalized on, a perfect situation for himself. And I don't think any of one of us would have done anything differently. Uh, It's just now he needs to show up on his side of that contract. He needs to be playing at that level. And if he's not, then maybe the trade window needs to be uh, considered. So, uh, and I hate to say that because I love Murray and I hope that he stays a nugget and I would hate to see him leave. And the last thing I want to hate, uh, I would hate to see happen is him get traded to another team, then comes back and kicks our ass, you know? Uh, so I'm going to stick behind Jamal Murray regardless. Uh, and hopefully he plays better. I mean, we need him to play better. There's no other ifs, ands, or buts. And uh, if not, then we're going to have to deal with the consequences for letting him stay on the team and continue to play like this. So thanks everyone for your comments, but that's all I got for this episode. I hope you liked it. Please give it a like and subscribe and share it out to your friends and family. Uh, the next game is on Tuesday. Again, we're facing the Grizzlies once again in Memphis. So it's a back to back in Memphis <laughs> a little bit. Um, and this one will be an in season tournament. So I'll catch you then. And you've been listening to CS 105.1, where I talk about sports and movies with good vibes. I'll catch you on Tuesday.